NASA sees comets now entering Earth's atmosphere more frequently than before. Images from NASA's polar spacecraft provided new evidence that Earth's upper atmosphere is being sprayed in effect by a steady stream of water-bearing objects comparable to small comets. Using Polar's Visible Imaging System, VIS, a research team led by Dr. Louis A. Frank of the University of Iowa in Iowa City has detected objects that streak towards Earth, disintegrate at high altitudes and deposit large clouds of water vapor in our upper atmosphere. This is according to Goddard Space Flight Center, 28th of May, 1997. And uh, this is one of the various images coming in, incoming object image, image taken by the Visible Imaging System, VIS, on NASA's polar spacecraft in ultraviolet light, contains a trail of an object over the Atlantic Ocean and Western Europe. This was on September 26, 1996. The object was in sunlight, but the Earth below was in darkness. So a map of the Earth has been superimposed onto the image as a frame of reference, and you can see where it went over. Basically, it was over northern uh, Europe, Germany, across the British Isles, and south of uh, Iceland, Greenland, and coming in towards across the North Atlantic, coming in towards Canada, and I guess eventually streaking over, like uh, it would have been New York, uh, Washington, D.C., Virginia type of uh, a line. So the object was in sunlight, but there below darkness, so they superimposed the map for reference. According to Dr. Louis A. Frank of the University of Iowa, the instrument's principal investigator, this time lapse image, was a duration of only 54 seconds, and it shows a small comet the size of a two-bedroom house that disrupted 5,000 to 15,000 miles above the Earth. The Polar spacecraft was launched February 24, 1996, and is managed by NASA Goodard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And of course, the credit for this image is Goodard and University of Iowa. So the image show the images show that we have a large population of objects in the Earth's vicinity that have not been detected before. So this is something pretty new. This is what Frank said who designed the VIS instrument, he says, we detect these objects at a rate that suggests Earth is being bombarded by 5 to 30 small comets every single minute, or a 1,000 a day. Comets are known to contain frozen water and are sometimes called dirty snowballs. So that's a 1,000 a day bringing in water. We also have uh, other asteroids coming in, bringing out 40 tons of dust every day. 40 tons of dust every day accumulating from our solar system onto Earth. Isn't that something? Now, uh, according to Frank, the incoming objects, which Frank estimates is the size of a small house, they pose no threat to people on Earth, though, nor to astronauts that are in orbit. They break up and are destroyed at 600 to 15,000 miles above our Earth. In fact, he says, this, regular, this relatively gentle cosmic rain, which possibly contains simple organic compounds, may well have nurtured the development of life on our planet. Who knows? Could be. Frank's work to obtain pictures is widely claimed. Not everybody accepts his interpretation of this data, though. There is not enough water apparent on the moon to satisfy some critics, Others complain that the seismometers on the moon have not detected the impacts that these objects would, would create. A paper dated December 15, 1997 from Geophysical Research says that the spots are merely artificial after all, and the controversy has created tension between Frank and the skeptics. Supporting evidence comes from Robert Conway, planetary physicist at Naval Research Lab. He announced on August 11, 1997, that his ultraviolet telescope on the Discovery Space Shuttle detected unexpectedly high levels of hydroxyl in the upper atmosphere. Hydroxyl comes from water vapor possibly, possibly delivered by the newly discovered extraterrestrial snowballs. 
That's uh, according to the Associated Press, carried a good pelting for Earth, the commercial appeal. That was from August 12, 1997. So these small comets dampening our atmosphere on Science Now, August 15, 1997. So this is a surprise. Objects seem to be breaking up so much higher than they would if the atmosphere were a disrupting force. So they're much higher than the atmosphere when they're breaking up. What's causing that? Frank says that the Earth's magnetic field is the cause of that. But this mechanism needs a lot more research and study. It'll be interesting to see how the story uh, develops. So if these things are real and gentle rain, or dirty snowballs, whatever you want to call them, these objects could easily deliver even uh, space bacteria or spores or viruses. Who knows what they can deliver onto the Earth? I'll leave links below for you for this on panspermia. This is, uh, of course, because uh, they're coming from a NASA news release, 97 to 112, and uh, Associated Press and Science Now. And continuing the abstract on Science Daily from the University of Iowa. University of Iowa Lewis Frank uses mathematical data analysis to show small comets are real. Dated January 6, 1999 asserting that critics have been looking at the wrong data. University of Iowa space physicist Louis Frank published a new paper supporting that his small comet, quote-unquote, theory, uh, that about 20 snow comets weighing 20 to 40 tons each. Can you imagine? 20 to 40 tons each disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere every single minute. This is um, unbelievably amazing. 20 to 40 tons of snow comets disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere every single minute of the day. Asserting that critics have been looking at the wrong data, University of Iowa space physicist has published a new paper supporting his com small comet theory. 20, to snow, uh, 20 snow comets weighing 20 to 40 tons each disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere every minute. The paper appeared January 1st, 1999, issue of the American Geophysicals Union. I, this is, I'm, I'm just astonished. I have never even heard of this before. This is, this is amazing. I mean, you know how much water that is? 20 to 40 tons every single minute over the earth? Of course, you know, just this on its own has, what does that mean? I mean, our earth is growing. Our earth is also getting more water every, every single minute of the day. Space water, space rain, call it what you want. Um, the Journal of Geophysical Research paper, Space Physics, uses an automated mathematical formula to filter out electronic instrument noise from data gathered by NASA's polar satellite. The results, says Frank and his University of Iowa colleague John Sigworth, is a hands-off analysis showing that instrumental effects were not major contributors to the images of atmospheric holes. Using the mathematical formula, the two researchers found that the atmospheric holes photographed by the polar satellite cameras increase in number when photographed from lower altitudes, increase in number when photographed during local morning time periods, appear larger in size in satellite images when photographed from lower altitudes, and vary in number depending upon the season. Quote, what critics of the small comet theory were analyzing was instrumental noise, Frank says. If you strip away the noise from the data, as they properly should have done, what remains clearly validates the reality of atmospheric holes. Our most recent paper is the only comprehensive paper on this topic and shows without reasonable doubt that the atmospheric holes are indeed a real phenomenon. Frank says that the mathematical formula applied to the data screened out possible causes of electronic noise such as longer wavelength radiation, energetic electrons and uneven sensitivity or hotspots among camera instrument pixels. Significantly, he found mid-January 1998 data containing no atmospheric holes and used it as a baseline measurement. Quote, the period in mid-January during which no atmospheric holes were detected provided an excellent opportunity to have a very effective calibration series of images which were equivalent to an extensive 
post-launch laboratory calibration. These in-flight calibration images were extremely important in establishing the instrument noise perfor performance without the presence of atmospheric holes and with the actual temperatures and operating voltages for the instrument. These images verify the accuracy of our computations of random hole rates. He says in 1998, study Frank and Sigworth analyzed 1981 data collected from the Dynamics Explorer 1 satellite and compared it to data gathered by Polar in 1997, finding a mid-January lull in both sets of data. And despite the fact that observations of seasonal variations in atmospheric holes were made, 16 years apart by different spacecraft carrying different cameras, criticism remained. Several papers refuting the theory were presented at the spring 1998 AGU meeting, one of them suggesting that measurements made by another satellite show that the atmosphere some 15 to 35 miles above the Earth is much drier than the small comet theory would suggest. In December 1997, Frank presented a study at the AGU fall meeting showing that dark spots called atmospheric holes because of their appearance in film captured in June 1997 on polar photographs decrease in size and number as the satellite's altitude and distance from the holes increases. Earlier, Frank had created, had created a stir at the May 1997 AGU meeting when he revealed a series of polar satellite photographs ranging from a picture of a small comet the size of a two-bedroom house disintegrating thousands of miles above the Atlantic Ocean to an image of light emitted by the breakup of water molecules from a small comet less than 2,000 miles above the Earth. Frank and Sigworth, who co-discovered the small comets and des designated and built the three visible imaging systems, VIS, camera, aboard Polar, offered the pictures as proof of their theory. Frank first announced the small comet theory in 1986 after examining images recorded in photographs taken by Dynamics Explorer 1. Frank and his colleagues had designed and built a special camera to take pictures of the northern lights, including the first images of the complete ring of the northern lights above the North Pole. But some of the images contained unexplained dark spots or atmospheric holes. After eliminating the possibility of equipment malfunction and numerous other explanations, Frank and Sigworth concluded that the atmospheric holes represented clouds of water vapor being released high above Earth's atmosphere by the disintegration of small comets composed mostly of snow. They calculated that more than 25,000 comets entered the atmosphere every day. 25,000, not 1,000, 25,000 a day. At that rate, the steady stream of comets would have added about one inch of water to Earth's ocean, oceans every 20,000 years, which means that global warming, <laughs> the, the, sea, the sea rise is not only global warming or ice melt or glacier melt, it's also all this water coming in <laughs> by the ice comets, one inch every 20,000 years, enough to fill the oceans over billions of years. Can you imagine? The theory was immediately controversial with people asking why such objects had not been observed previously. Because nobody was looking at the poles, looking for the auroras, that's where they found them. Frank countered that not only their small size, 20 to 30 feet in diameter, makes observation difficult, but also that water striking the upper atmosphere glows very faintly as compared to the bright glow of metal and rocks in the solid meteors. The controversy reignited after the 1997 launch of Polar, carrying two sensitive visible light cameras and one far ultraviolet light camera made it possible to photograph the small comets with greater resolution. Unbelievable! And there's more information we could look at Small Comets Physics Iowa Ed edu uh, Education, Small Comet Websites. Unbelievable! The full text of the thing, if you want to see it, they're all here. Story Source Iowa, University of Iowa, and uh, this is University of Iowa, University of Iowa, Louis Frank uses mathematical data analysis to show small comets are real on Science Daily, January 6, 1999, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Unbelievable. 25,000 a day, from 20 to 40 tons each, 
and adding over an inch every 20,000 years, over a billion years enough to fill our oceans. This, this is, I still can't believe this. I just still can't believe this. Anyway, this is fascinating. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.